Good times uh, for uh, Ireland, uh, but a very difficult week uh, for Welsh rugby. Uh, Warren Gatlin's side uh, slumped to a second division. The Six Nations talk of a players' uh, strike. Conor Morris is down pitch side now, and he's got a, a view from the Principality. Yeah, as you say, Claire, Welsh rugby can do nothing but uh, write headlines for all the wrong reasons in terms of rugby at the moment. And Gareth, to that end, it'll be interesting to get the inside track from Wales. We've had the governance issues around the Welsh rugby union. Now we're on to contract disputes and we're, we think, on the brink of strike action next week ahead of Wales against England and the Principality. Yeah, this is a mess. There's two decades in the making. Now, the crux of it is the way the game is run and financed in Wales. If you think about the regions and the union, they come to an agreement every five or six years about how the money is distributed, how much the regions get from the union for the services of the international players. Now, the issue is they haven't come to an agreement on a new deal. That should have been done months ago. Because they haven't come to an agreement, the regions don't know their budgets, and therefore they cannot budget for next season. They cannot sign new players. That's a nightmare. But more importantly, they cannot re-sign players. So you have a collective around 70 players in Wales who are out of contract this summer and have no prospect of employment after that. And understandably then the knock-on effect is we've got players turning up here tonight expected to put their bodies on the line for the Dragons knowing that if they get injured, if they're out of contract, they don't know where they're going to be next season and their livelihoods are effectively in limbo. Well, Jack Dixon, uh, mm. a pregnant wife, another child as well, doesn't know if he's going to be able to pay his mortgage. Break your leg. OK, insurance covers you, but you will not be able to find new employment as well. OK, they're 70 players. On top of that, why are the other players potentially looking to support them? Well, they're not particularly happy with the terms offered to them. Anyway, a reduction in money, that's inevitable. I think they do accept it. There's talk of a pay-as-you-play kind yeah. of idea. Well, if we're talking about looking after the welfare of the players, what, what kind of messaging are you telling the players that they have to go out and play as much as they can at the same time being told, well, you may need to rest because of concussion, etc. So there's general distrust and dissatisfaction all across the board in Wales when it comes to the players. Well, strike action in any walk of life is usually the, the nuclear option. Um, what do you anticipate is going to happen this week? There's talk of a Wednesday deadline, and obviously that game is on the horizon next weekend. Let's not beat about the bush. A strike for Wales-England would be catastrophic for the game. Welsh rugby cannot afford to lose that pot of money. Yeah. However, this is the power play for the players. Last week, if you do ask me, would they go all the way? I'd say no. Privately, they're telling me, yeah, we're really serious about this. Okay. Whether or not they go all the way right to the death, you never know in Welsh rugby. Let's hope not. Appreciate your time. Thanks for that insight. Cheers, Cheers girl. Bernard, you saw it up close and personal from your time at Rodney Parade. It really has descended into a dark place now, hasn't it? Yeah, and it's every couple of years, and you know, this needs to be the last time that the game is in such disarray. And I was talking to a couple of Dragons players there, and they said, oh, the Irish players are so lucky. They come in the morning, they put their bag in, in the dressing room, and all they do is think about playing on Saturday. There's none of this nonsense about are you going to get paid or not? Medical care is, is top notch, etc. Whereas every so often and far too regularly, they're worried about their future. And the, the balance hasn't been right. The, the international team papered over so many cracks, but the regional game has been underfunded and probably lacked a little bit of purpose and identity for a long time. And, and, and you're, caught, you're caught because half of these players tonight for the Dragons have contracts, JJ Hanran, etc. And then you've guys like Ross Moriarty. Um, ben Fry, Jack Dixon, who were off contract. So the, the squad himself isn't unified, and Wales isn't unified as, as a playing group because you have your internationals who get the match fees for internationals. That, you know, they want to be in the Six Nations, they want to go to a World Cup, they want to upset the, um, the, or rock the boat at all. And then these guys need them to fight for them. So Alan Wynne Jones and Ken Owens, the fellas at their end of their career who have that power, have a big role to play. Like we saw, Scarlets have been able to have a week of chaos and get a win against Edinburgh. The Ospreys last night you know, were, were very, very poor. They obviously couldn't deal with it. It's going to be really interesting to the Dragons. Like the Dragons this week, apparently, after meeting on Thursday, they didn't feel like they could train, so they played five-side soccer. You know, when you're playing Leinster away on a Saturday, that's not a good prep, you know what I mean? So I don't know if they are going to be able to unify and put a performance in. If they don't, this is going to be you know, one-way traffic. But the reality is next week has to be a week that the regions and the Welsh Rugby Union get themselves aligned and the game is funded properly. Donald, we heard some harrowing uh, stories during the week about player welfare. Where do you see the solution for this? 
Uh, well, something has to happen this week, there's no doubt about that. I mean, if the Wales-England game is called off, that's the nuclear option. And it isn't only for Welsh rugby, because I can imagine the knock-on effect, there's contracts, there's broadcasters, there's so many other things, all dependent on getting X amount of games in the Six Nations. But look, the, this Welsh scenario has been shambolic, almost from the outset of the professional game. Like, when you look at the way the game is run here, you know, you dot your hat to the IRFU. One very significant thing, right from day one, we had a natural setup for professional rugby, given that we had four provinces that people could identify with and had been following for over 100 years. They had makey uppy teams in Wales. You had the likes of the Ospreys, which is Neath and Swansea, the two greatest rivals, were thrown into a pot together. So, right from the outset, they got it wrong. I think uh, the international game has papered over those cracks as Bernard has said, but they had a they had the, they had a golden generation, the likes of Alan Wynne, Ken Owens, Liam Williams, uh, Lee Halfpenny, Dan Bigger, outstanding players, Lions Test players, and that enabled them to compete at international level. But below that, really, the cracks were there for all to see, and they're in a horrible position. I, I understand where the players are coming from. It is their livelihood. When you read that one Welsh player, a starter for Wales, is on antidepressants because he can't deal with the pressure he's under, then you're looking at a serious issue here. And just, just on, on this, like Ross Moriarty, he's less than 60 caps, so at the moment there's a 60 cap rule, these players can't leave Wales and go pick up a contract somewhere else and still play for Wales, so they talk about a compromise of 30 cap rule, but the reality is in Wales, a lot of people now feel they can only fund three regions properly, right? but to go to three regions means taking less money out of the pot from the URC, so now they're talking about potentially an Ospreys and an Ealing amalgamation, so it's there's so many things on the table, but the, you know we can't be looking at this every two or three years. Sure, it 